Dave Mulliken. Bonjour. Yeah, Stéphane Bourgoin. Oh, you talk uh, French? Un peu. <laughs> David Mullican, un ancien policier à la retraite. Dans sa mallette, le dossier Henley qu'il conserve précieusement depuis 35 ans. C'est lui qui a dirigé toute l'enquête, arrêté Henley et recueilli ses aveux à l'été 73. I shot Charles in the head with Dean's pistol. The last one I can remember their name is Homer Garcia. And I shot him in the head and we buried him at Rayburn. I shot and killed Johnny Delone and me and Dean and David Brook killed two brothers. I think we choked them. We killed a boy by the name of Billy Lawrence. Then Marty Jones, me and Dean choked him and buried him in the boat stall. Once Henley started killing these people, I think he enjoyed it. It was having the power of life and death or another human being. I think he was glad to get it off his chest. I think it, all these murders had been bothering him and he wanted to tell somebody. He had participated in so much evil. David Mullican accepte d'emmener Stéphane Bourgoin sur les lieux de l'arrestation. Ce petit pavillon dans la banlieue de Houston. La maison de Dean Corle, l'homosexuel du groupe. C'est ici qu'ont été commises les pires atrocités. David Mullican se souvient parfaitement de ce qu'il a découvert ce matin du 8 août 1973 en fouillant la maison. This is what we found inside. This is a toolbox with two-headed dildo, some glass rods, some wires from an electric motor coming out of one closet. Des gonnes michées, des instruments de torture, des menottes, mais aussi des bâches en plastique pour emballer les cadavres. Were you surprised when you saw this? Yes. I didn't expect to find that kind of thing. I didn't know where it was going to lead me. And as it turned out, it led me to the biggest serial murder in history. La plupart des victimes ont vécu l'enfer sur cette étrange planche de bois. Elle a été soigneusement conservée dans les sous-sols du commissariat de Pasadena. Pour la première fois depuis 35 ans, les policiers acceptent de la ressortir des archives. This is what we call the bodyboard. Uh, you can see the handcuffs and the ropes. Dean Coral, if he had two victims, he would put one on each side. Then they would handcuff one wrist and one ankle at the bottom. Cette planche était le support de jeu sadique, selon un scénario bien rodé par Henley et ses complices. Use what they call a handcuff trick. Henley would put cuffs on himself. And then he'd show them he could get out of it. And they said, you try it. Of course, they couldn't get out. Henley kept the key in his back pocket. He'd fish it out and open the cuffs. When they put him on the kid, he couldn't get out. He was trapped. But what happened to them once they were cuffed? Oh, Carl raped them. He did whatever he wanted to. And they had an electric motor with a long wire attached. They'd touch it to their testicles just to see what they'd do. Or they'd pull their pubic hair out one at a time with a pair of pliers. They'd shove this glass rod up their penis and then break it. Have you ever seen anything like this in your whole no. career? He was a twisted, sick individual. Ça me donne la chair de poule. Hein. Là, ça me, ça me prend à la poitrine parce que je pense à, à ce que les victimes ont dû endurer. C'est absolument terrifiant. D'autant plus terrifiant que l'imagination du trio est sans limite. Comme ce jour où ils attachent deux frères à la planche et leur proposent un marché. Whichever one of you beats the other one to death, I'll let the other one go. So they lay there all day and beat on each other with one hand on this board. And then when they came in at night, they killed them. Comment Henley et ses deux complices ont-ils pu atteindre un tel degré dans la cruauté Pourquoi ont-ils décidé de violer, de torturer puis de tuer des adolescents de la manière la plus atroce possible Que se passe-t-il à ce moment-là 
dans la tête du tueur. 